So nearsighted versus farsighted. In this video, I'm gonna be reviewing what it means to be nearsighted so that you can better understand how our eyes and vision works. So let's take a look. Hey everyone, welcome to Dr. Eye Health. I am Dr. Joseph Allen, and here on this channel, you're gonna find education all about the eyes, vision, and finding the best vision products. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. Also, at any point throughout the video, check out the show notes and links below for further information about everything that we go over. Otherwise, let's go right into the video. So now to better understand nearsightedness versus farsightedness, let's go over the basic fundamentals of how the eyes actually work. Now, when light hits objects all around us, that light then bounces off those objects and enters into our eye. When it hits our eye, it goes through three different refractive structures that help bend the light. And these structures include the tear film, the very front surface of the eye, you have the cornea, which is the window to the eye, and then you have the crystalline lens, and that's the focusing lens inside of the eye. When light goes through these structures, those structures actually bend the light and help focus it to the back of the eye. And hopefully that light gets focused onto the human retina. That retina is basically like the satellite dish that picks up all that light information and then sends it to the visual processing centers of the brain, and that's what gives you your eyesight. Now, whether you have nearsightedness, farsightedness, or astigmatism, we refer to that as refractive error. And refractive error means that the strength powers of the eye are either too strong, they're too weak, or that the retina itself is either too far back in reference to where that light is focusing, or it's too far forward, and the end result is blurred vision. However, in most cases, we can correct for that with glasses, contact lenses, or corrective eye surgery to get that light to focus onto the retina correctly giving clear vision. Now, if somebody is nearsighted, in the medical world, we call that person having myopia or being myopic. And that means that when they see things in the distance, things are not in focus, things are too blurry. However, when they're looking up close at something like their phone, then things are nice, in focus, they're sharp, and again, that person is nearsighted. Now this happens because when an eye is fully relaxed, looking in the distance, the light isn't focused cleanly onto the retina, and in fact the light is focused too strongly, it converges in front of the retinal surface. Or it could be that the eyeball itself is actually stretched out and is longer, meaning that retina is pushed further behind where that light is focusing. Actually, when we fix or prescribe uh, glasses or contact lenses to correct for nearsightedness, we actually prescribe minus lenses. These lenses are actually made to weaken the power of the eye and push that focusing light to the retina to help you see. That is why when you look at a prescription for glasses for someone with nearsightedness, you'll actually see a little minus symbol in front of those numbers. Now the reason for somebody who is nearsighted to be able to see up close without any form of correction on has to do with some physical properties of light that comes off of near objects. The light that comes off of a near object we call divergent light. And that means that the light is actually spreading outward from that near object. Now, the reason somebody can still see up close with that divergent light is because it's balanced out by the focusing powers of the eye, and that makes the light land perfectly onto the retina, even without glasses. And again, that's why they can see clearly up close. So that's what it means to be nearsighted. Did you get all that? Now let's compare that to someone with just the opposite. They are farsighted, or in the medical world, we call that having hyperopia or hypermetropia. Now explaining hyperopia or farsightedness is a little bit trickier than nearsightedness, and that's because of the involvement of the crystalline lens. Now the crystalline lens, again, is one of the focusing powers of the eye, but the crystalline lens is under the influence of a muscle inside the eye called the ciliary body. And when this muscle flexes, the lens inside the eye can change shape and therefore focus the light inside of the eye, hopefully to the retina on its own. It's actually one of the most amazing parts of the human eye, and that's the ability to focus light on its own. Just like a camera lens that's on autofocus. Now in eye care, we like to assume that the refractive powers of the crystalline lens are fully relaxed. However, that's not really true. Almost always people are using their eye muscles just a little bit. In fact, it's nearly impossible to fully relax your eye muscles on your own. However, in the clinic, we can use different medications in the form of eye drops to help relax those muscles completely. And we call that a cycloplegic refraction. And that gives us a lot more information about how somebody's actually utilizing their 
other eye muscles and the exact refractive powers of the eye. Now for this example, let's imagine somebody who is farsighted that cannot use their eye muscles at all, and they're looking in the distance. In that case, the light being focused inside of the eye is being focused too weakly. It's not strong enough, and the light is actually focused behind the retina. Or it could be that the eye itself is too small, and the light again is focused again behind the retina and not giving us a clear image. In that case, somebody is prescribed plus lenses. These are magnifying lenses that actually help move that light in front toward the retina, giving them clear vision. Now, in many cases, somebody who is farsighted may not need glasses at all, or for maybe not at least most of the time. And that is because that focusing power of the eye, if they are able to utilize their eye muscles and focus the crystalline lens inside the eye, then it basically acts like a magnifying lens that is fluid and is allowed to adjust its power, again, without needing that farsighted prescription. However, the powers of that crystalline lens are limited. In fact, that lens grows every year of life, and as it gets bigger year after year, the lens actually becomes more rigid and difficult to flex, meaning that your power or ability to move that focusing plane forward to the retina gets more difficult and more difficult over time, especially when somebody's looking up close, meaning that a lot of people who are farsighted, again, they take their glasses off, they can see pretty well, but when they're looking up close, it's more difficult, so they need reading glasses. In fact, that's really one of the reasons why a lot of people end up not having glasses until their mid-40s and end up needing glasses to read as they get older, and we call that presbyopia, which is literally Latin for old eyes. But when somebody is young and has the ability to focus that lens inside of the eye, they can overcome quite a bit of farsightedness on their own without glasses. The tough part is that some people are using those muscles all day long just to see clearly, even at distance. And eventually those muscles, that whole dynamic process of using those eye muscles and focusing can break down, resulting in kind of a muscle spasm inside the eye. It can end up with eye fatigue or even lead to things like headaches. And so some people end up still needing to wear glasses for their farsightedness at all distances just to help relax those eye muscles and prevent that eye fatigue. And that's it, that's basically the difference between nearsightedness and farsightedness. However, when somebody is nearsighted or myopic, it's usually not that the focusing powers of the eye are too strong, it's more likely that the eye itself has grown and stretched out through adolescence. And this can happen because of either genetic influences, environmental factors, but that eye actually does tend to stretch out. And that's concerning for me as an eye care professional because when the eye starts to stretch out, higher amounts of nearsightedness are associated with different eye diseases that can potentially lead to vision loss. And this can include cataracts, glaucoma, a certain condition called myopic maculopathy, it can lead to eye floaters, retinal tears, and attachments. And even in some extreme cases, the retina can actually stretch out so much that it begins to crack open and little blood vessels can grow inside the eye, and those new blood vessels can destroy the retina completely. So yeah, having excessive amounts of nearsightedness can put the eye at higher risk of certain eye diseases. It's a major concern. In fact, in eye care, there's a whole growing kind of subspecialty called myopia control. And that's utilizing different strategies, different types of lenses to help influence the eyes uh, to slow down and stop it from progressing and growing longer. And the, the entire point of that is to again, slow down and prevent these different eye diseases from occurring and becoming more prevalent. I actually just recently did an interview with one of my doctor friends here in Minnesota, Dr. Roman Gerber of Wink Family Eye Care, who's very passionate about myopia control. And if you'd like to check out that video, I have looked up a link to that in the description below, as well as in the YouTube card up above. All right, eye health question of the day. Are you nearsighted? Are you farsighted? Do you wear glasses? Do you wear contacts? Or have you had some sort of corrective surgery like LASIK? Go ahead and comment in the section below. I'd love to hear from you. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Again, this is Dr. Joe Allen here from Dr. Eye Health. If you'd like to catch other cool videos here from Dr. Eye Health, just click or tap the screen up here to the side or click or tap the screen down here. Otherwise, keep an eye on it and we'll talk to you soon. Being myopic, oh wow, myopic, better understand, okay.